Okay, so to finish up with our inferential statistics section, um, once again, the purpose of inferential statistics is to make inferences about the population based on the results of uh, the results observed in the sample. Um, the basic question is, how likely is it that the difference or relationship that is observed in the sample could occur if a real difference or relationship does not exist in the population? Uh, again, the population is the group that we're interested in studying, um, such as women over the age of 75, and the sample is the group of subjects the researcher is actually collecting data from. Um, so the group of randomly chosen women over the age of 75 in that case. In inferential statistics, we are hoping to prove or disprove the hypothesis. A hypothesis is a researcher's prediction about the results. The null hypothesis states that there will be no difference or no effect or no relationship between the variables, and the research hy hypothesis states that there will be a difference or a relationship between these variables. The null hypothesis is always the one that is tested in inferential statistics. Another way of phrasing the question then would be, what is the probability that the observed results could occur if the null hypothesis were true? Okay, so here's an example. Uh, let's say that you're the president of a pharmaceutical company and you believe that you've developed a new drug to treat depression, but you also wonder if it could uh, also affect memory. Um, it is tested with two groups of volunteers. One group, which would be the experimental group, takes the drug, and the other group takes a placebo. A placebo, of course, is a sugar pill that has no medical effect. After a set period of time, both groups are presented with a list of words to memorize, and they're tested on how well, uh, how many words they can recall. So your hypothesis, of course, then, is that there is a difference in the number of words recalled by the two groups. The null hypothesis is that there will be no difference between the number of words, words recalled by the two groups. So after doing the experiment, you might have found that the experimental group recalled an average or mean of 37 words compared to an average of 36 words for the control group. Would you be willing to conclude and bet your company's money that the wonder drug worked? Or would a bigger difference be necessary? If so, how big of a difference would you need? So inferential statistics helps us to answer these questions. Whatever the difference between the groups, there's always a chance that that difference could have occurred because of random chance or just random factors. However, the larger the difference between groups, the greater the significance. There's less of a chance that the observed differences are due to random factors. So what is the probability that this difference between the two groups is due to chance? This is calculated and expressed as p-value. A p-value of less than 0.05 indicates that there is less than a 5% chance that the difference in results is due purely to chance factors. P-value scores can range from 0, meaning no probability, to 1, meaning 100% probability. If the p-value is less than 0.05, then we can reject, reject the null hypothesis. Remember that the null hypothesis states that there is no difference between the groups. Therefore, if we reject it, we are saying that there is a difference. This tells us that the phenomenon is observed in the sample will also occur, or is very likely to occur, in the population. 0 0.05 for the p-value is sort of an industry standard that's followed in psychology. Again, we want a low p-value to show that there is a difference or a relationship. Uh, unlike maybe some other areas where we're looking for larger numbers, p-value, we want as small a number as possible. The logic behind that is that if the p-value is small, we have reason to believe that there is a real relationship. So if we look at two possible scenarios, in scenario A, we gather our data, run the t-test, and we discover that we have a p-value less than 0 0.05. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis, showing that there is a difference between the control and the experimental group. Therefore, it is likely that the drug had an effect. We put our wonder drug on the market. We, we mark it up by 500%. And we make millions. Uh, in scenario B, we get a p-value greater than 0.05. We cannot reject the null hypothesis, so we cannot show that the drug had any greater effect than chance occurrence. We market the drug purely as an antidepressant. We mark it up by only 300%, and we still make millions. So I just want to point out that um, there are there are two commonly used inferential tests. The t-test is used when we're comparing the difference uh, in the means of two groups um, when the data is either interval or ratio. 
Uh, if we're comparing means among more than two groups or two more groups, then we use an analysis of variance or an ANOVA um, test. Uh, that's a little bit beyond the scope of this class, but if you're reading reviews, if you're reading psychological research and data, you may see the term ANOVA, um, that ANOVA was used to derive a p-value. Um, that's just if we're looking at more than two variables um, that is used. But again, that's largely beyond the scope of this class. So that's it for inferential statistics. The next step now is to go on and take the quiz. Once again, you have three opportunities to get as high a grade as you can on that quiz and the uh, Blackboard will take the highest of those scores. Don't forget, you can always go back and review the lectures. Thank you.